Uh, this is the Will Clayton Church of Christ in Alma, Texas. This is our midweek Bible study. This is December the 6th, 2021. This is our first Wednesday of the month. So we have what is our tradition, prayer and praise, where we will sing songs and have prayers uh, lifted up. Uh, and we will uh, have scriptures read, and then we'll have Brother Javier Frias give us a lesson of encouragement uh, that will be a little different than our normal Bible study. Combination of a uh, singing songs and what we do on Sunday also. So uh, we hope you will be encouraged by what you will both see and hear. So at this particular time, uh, let us go to Heavenly Father in prayer. Father God, at the time of coming before your throne of grace and mercy, at begging you, Savior, to forgive us that we may approach you with a humble heart. We ask you, Lord, to bless those who are present, those still arriving as we have inclement weather today. Pray that they arrive safely. Father God, we also pray that you will hear our petition on behalf of some saints that are in need. Uh, Brother Anthony Carr, uh, one of our Bible teachers and uh, leader of the congregation, uh, is in the hospital. We have some very difficult times. We pray that you will cause the doctors and nurses to do all that is possible to rescue our brother. We pray that his wife Gwen will be comforted as she waits patiently for the good news. We also pray, Lord, you bless Sister Bina Fletcher, who is having as we speak now, surgery, uh, me emergency surgery, appendix removed. We pray that no complications develop, that this will happen, uh, relieve all the pain. Pray her children will be comforted as they wait patiently for the good news. We pray also at this particular time for every member, Lord, that is out of this congregation, that we will be faithful going into 2021 with a new and vigorous hope on life greater than we had last year since how you have blessed us father with another year before us we ask you to continue to bless this prayer and praise service it will be pleasing and acceptable in your eyesight bless our teacher brother frizzy will come up and break unto us the bread of life we ask you father give him good recall help him to have courage to tell us the things that we want to hear and the things we don't want to hear let him not be discouraged if we should have a resistance but let him be patient rebuke us sharply but with love and also guide us in areas that we do not know father god these blessings we're asking your son jesus christ holy and righteous name amen if you have your song books uh get ready to sing some songs of praise unto the most high god if you have your song, but look at number 26. In the garden. In the garden. Number 26. Sing all three verses. If you have it, let us sing. I come to the garden alone. While the dew is still on the roses. And the voice I hear falling on my ear. The Son of God discloses, and He walks with me, and He talks with me, and He tells me I am His own, and the joy we share as we tarry there, none other has ever known he speaks and the sound of his voice is so sweet the birds hush their singing and the melody that he gave to me within my heart is ringing and he walks with me and he talks with me and he tells me i am his own and the 
joy we share as we tarry there. None other has ever known. I'd stay in the garden with him. Though the night around me be falling, but he bids me go through the voice of woe. His voice to me is calling, and he walks with me, and he talks with me and he tells me I am his own and the joy we share as we tarry there none other has ever known Amen. Praise God. If you have your Bibles if you will Go with me to the book of Psalms. We will look at the 17th division of Psalms. This is a Psalm of David. 17th division and we will read beginning at verse 1. Hear the right, O Lord, attend unto my cry. Give ear unto my prayer that goeth not out of feigned lips. Let my sentence come from thy presence. Let thine eyes behold the things that are equal. Thou hast proved mine heart. Thou hast visited me in the night. Thou hast tried me and shalt find nothing. I am purposed that my mouth shall not transgress. Concerning the works of men, by the word of thy lips I have kept me from the paths of the destroyer. Hold up my goings in thy paths, that my footsteps slip not. I have called upon thee, for thou wilt hear me. O God, incline thine ear unto me, and hear my speech. Show thy marvelous loving kindness, O that thou savest by thy right hand them which put their trust in thee from those that rise up against them. Keep me as the apple of the eye. Hide me under the shadow of thy wings. From the wicked that oppress me. From my deadly enemies. Who compass me about. They are enclosed in their own fat. With their mouth they speak proudly. They have now compassed us in our steps. They have set their eyes bowing down to the earth. Like as a lion that is greedy of his prey. And as it were a young lion looking in secret places. Arise, O Lord. Disappoint him. Cast him down. Deliver my soul from the wicked. Which is thy sword. From me which are thy hand. O Lord. From men of the world. Which have their portion in this life. And whose belly thou fittest with thy hid treasure. They are full of children. And leave the rest of their substance to their babes. As for me. I will behold thy face in righteousness. I shall be satisfied. When I awake with thy likeness. Lord have a choice blessing to the readers and hearers and the doers of his word. This time let us go to our heavenly father and prayer. Father God, the Father of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, it's by thy power we come before you. Though we be but dust, Lord, you have sustained us with thy spirit. You've made us invincible against the wiles of Satan, a foe who has never lost a battle to any man save Christ. Father, we have gained a victory and will continue to fight with such a crown against this beast, the devil, knowing that we will be vigilant, that we slip not, for he surely will devour us at that point. Father God, we ask you to bless the leadership at this congregation. Help us to 
move swiftly and with tenacity into 2021 as we have much work to do this year, Lord. We are desirous that we will install more elders and deacons into our number. We will need our guidance and help to do that, Lord. We pray that you will help us teach diligently things that will inspire, encourage, and develop men to be able to do this work. We pray, Lord, that you will bless all the congregations that bear thy name with the same blessing abundantly. We pray, Father, that they who have no leadership other than the evangelists wake up before it is too late. We pray, Lord, those that have leaders and are disrespecting them in other congregations, we pray they will change before it's too late. We pray those that have leaders and they have disrespected the members that they will wake up before it's everlasting and eternally too late and open again the doors of the building that the saints can be together in one place. Father, we ask you to help us in this effort. Help us this year, Lord, to fight fearlessly without fear of losing even our own physical life. Help us to give it all that we have, Lord. We will not be disappointed if we give out through death, but we will be sorrowful if we give in to sin. Father God, we ask you to bless this congregation and others to lead in that direction who already respect the leadership listed in the Bible. And we are adding to that, Lord. And ominous before you. We pray others will follow suit. And not look back. But press forward toward the mark. That we may experience the resurrection of eternal life. In Jesus Christ's holy and righteous name do we pray. Amen. Good evening saints. Good evening. see everyone this evening. Uh, it's midweek Bible study. Uh, praise as well. Um, this evening, I want to talk about another subject in the scriptures that I believe God wants us to look at and, and talk about as we're on earth. That we can learn from Him, uh, learn from His Holy Spirit, learn from the scriptures to understand what He wants us to think Amen. and how He wants us to be uh, here on earth. Um, <clears throat> before we had the Holy Spirit, we just were ourselves with our own thinking, our own mind, our own understanding. But we were given a gift, which is the Holy Spirit from heaven. And with this gift and with the scriptures, God has given us everything um, to make it to heaven and to know how to speak, how to think, and how to live. So I want to talk about this evening, um, uh, surmisings uh, versus perception. Surmisings versus perception. I want to look at the scriptures in 1 Timothy uh, chapter is number 6 where Paul wrote to Timothy in verse number 1 of the chapter. We'll look at this word. It says, Let as many servants as are under the yoke count their own masters worthy of all honor. The Bible says that the name of God and his doctrine be not blasphemed. And that they have believing masters, that they have believing masters, let them not despise them, because they are brethren. Uh, but rather do them service, because they are faithful and beloved partakers of the benefit. These things teach and exhort. It says, if any man teach otherwise, and consent not to wholesome words, even the words of our Lord Jesus Christ, and to the doctrine which is according to godliness, the Bible says he is proud, knowing nothing, but doting about questions and strifes of words, whereof cometh envyings, strife, railings, evil surmisings. Now, here in verse 1, as it mentions, servants, as are under the yoke, count their own masters worthy of all honor, that the name of God and his doctrine be not blasphemy. And then it says, and they that have believing masters, let them not despise them, because they are brethren. So, you have two different things. 
uh, two different kind of masters here that he's talking about. Don't despise them. Don't. So he's teaching us how to think. Don't despise them. Do service. They're faithful and beloved. Partakers of the benefit. These things teach and exhort. Now, if they're masters that, that teach falsely or, or live forward, now you have a reason to uh, bring out the scriptures to help them to see the truth. Uh, now, verse number four, uh, concerning those who don't agree with this wholesome teaching, the Bible says that they are proud knowing nothing, verse four, doting about questions, strives of words, where it cometh envying, strife, railings, evil surmises. Now, the word surmising is evil suspicion. Uh, suspicion is not proof. It, it's, it's just something that you suspect, but you don't have the facts of it being truth. Amen. You just uh, have a suspising of it or suspicion of it. Uh, and now, uh, versus perception, uh, the word perception is defined as comprehend, consider, know, or discern. Something that you that you know, right? Uh, I want to also look at the word vicariously. You hear that word a lot of times, uh, maybe on television is, is where it's used a lot on these TV shows. But we're going to look at that word as well as defined as experiencing through the imagination, feeling, or act of another. I'm going to read that again. Vicarious means experiencing the, your imagination through the feeling, act, or acts of another. So it can be used in a good sense. Or it can be used in a bad sense. So if you have children. You may have a carrier star toward them. They have your same accent. They have your same traits. And uh, concerning that mindset. There's nothing wrong with going in and out. But the first steps. That we should always seek after is Christ. That's who we are trying to. Have our likeliness uh, match. Above all things. Uh, so we're going to look at these words and, and the scriptures and how men had these thoughts in them. And some of them were contrary to, to God's word. Look at 2 Samuel chapter 19 verse 6. 2 Samuel 19 verse 6. This is where Absalom was killed. And King David was crying and mourning because his son was killed. He did not take uh, the mindset maybe of Ezekiel where uh, he withhold his he withheld his tears, but he uh, continued to mourn and mourn uh, for his son. Now, there's one thought that Joab mentioned uh, after his uh, the king was mourning in 2 Samuel uh, chapter 19, uh, verse 4. It says, But the king covered his face, and the king cried with a loud voice, O my son Absalom, O Absalom, my son, my son. And Joab came into the house to the king and said thou hast shamed this day the faces of all thy servants which this day have saved thy life and the lives of thy sons and of thy daughters and the lives of thy wives and the lives of thy concubines and that thou lovest thine enemies and hatest thy friends for thou hast declared this day that thou regardest neither princes nor servants for this day I perceive that if Absalom had lived and all we have died this day then it had well, please thee, please thee well. So now that's that's a false perception. He's saying that he's saying that he knows he perceives if Absalom would have lived and all of us would have died, you would have been happy with that. That's so he's placing his thoughts inside of David's mind, which which he doesn't agree with that. Now, when Dave, another time when David sinned, uh, there was many uh, a plague where God sent and the angel of the sword had his sword out. And many died because of David's sin. And David said, Oh Lord, uh, shall one man sin and, and these suffer? The sheep of the Lord suffer. So he had compassion on, on God's people because they suffered because of his sin. And so another thing that he mentioned in verse 6 is that he said, Thou lovest thine enemies and hatest thy friends. He doesn't hate his friends. That's another false uh, accusation that he's falsely perceiving uh, concerning David. Uh, because he doesn't hate his friends, he's mourning for his son, which he lost. But at the same time, he uh, did not, at the, at the moment, his mourning overcame him, not recognizing, hey, this guy is God's enemy. He's trying to kill me. So he was uh, mourning because of that side of his personality, who, who he is, that he's my son and I still have care for him. Versus the side of him 
that is supposed to think concerning uh, God's enemy, concerning him trying to kill me. So that's part of who he was. Now, there was a time when uh, uh, Samson, not Samson, so forgive me, Samuel, uh, was mourning for uh, Saul. And God said, okay, that's enough mourning. Get up, go and on me a king. Mm -hmm. And so there's a time where uh, you have to do, you have, you can mourn, and then there's a time when you have action uh, to be taken, like the Bible says in, in Timothy, in season, out of season. All right, that means you got to be prepared in season, out of season, uh, to do God's work. And so, concerning uh, Genesis chapter four, verse nine, Genesis chapter four, verse nine, I want to look at a, a scripture here, uh, where the scripture says. And the Lord said unto Cain, Where is Abel thy brother? And he said, I know not. Am I my brother's keeper? Right? Am I my brother's keeper? That word keeper is defined as H8104, watchman, observer, or someone who marks. So Cain was supposed to watch his brother, keep his brother from sin, from offering up a sheep with a broken leg or a, or a lazy eye, but of the first uh, lings of the flock. Right? And Cain, vice versa, Abel as well. So when it comes to Adam and Eve, they were supposed to be keepers of themselves. Amen. You know, they were supposed to, Adam was supposed to keep Eve. Eve was supposed to keep Adam from eating the fruit uh, on the tree. And so he watched him, but he wasn't watching him for good. He watched him for evil and then he killed him. All right? And so. Another scripture in uh, Romans chapter 14, uh, verse 18. Look at Romans 14, 14 verse 18. Uh, we'll look at another verse here to continue this dialogue of this subject. The scripture says in this verse, he says, For he that is in these things serve the Christ is acceptable to God and approved of men. So whatever you, you have in your, your mind that when you're judging in the kingdom it has to be acceptable to God and approved of men now when it says approved of men it's talking about men that are approved by God who are proving things soundly uh, not false accusers as we're going to read concerning Christ when the Pharisees accuse Christ now when you gather around men like the Pharisees now whatever they approve is going to be a lie uh, as even as they accused him uh, falsely and were envious of him look at 2 Timothy 2 verse 15 2 Timothy 2 verse 15. Now the men that are approve all things, verse 2 Timothy 2 15. Scripture says, Study to show that so approving to God, a workman that needed not to be ashamed, rightly divided the word of God. So approved unto God. And then verse, well, we just finished reading, acceptable to God and approved of uh, men. And now if those men don't approve it and they can't uh, judge it righteously or they're not using the Bible, then it doesn't matter if they approve it or not, because they're not using God's word to, to approve it. Amen. So these men that Romans 14, 18 talks about have to be godly men that are sound, that don't surmise, um, but judge righteous judgment. Uh, let's look at another detail here in Acts uh, 14, uh, verse 15. Acts 14, verse number uh, 15. So we can look at a different angle here where the scripture says, this is where Paul and Barnabas, they were trying to create some worship for them. I want to start at verse, uh, start at verse number 12. And they called Barnabas, Jupiter and Paul Mercurius because he was the chief speaker. And the priest of Jupiter, which was before the city, brought oxen and garlands unto the gates and would have done sacrifice to the people, which when the apostles Barnabas and Paul heard of it, they rent their clothes and ran in among the people, crying out and saying, Sirs, why do you these things? We also are men of like passions with you and preach unto you that ye should turn uh, from these vanities unto the living God, which made heaven and earth and the sea and all things that are there. And so these men that brought the oxen, uh, they had a false perception, a false perception concerning Paul and Barnabas. Paul and Barnabas were not Mercurius or Jupiter. That's a false Amen. assumption, false perception of what you think they are. Now, what it mentions in verse 15, where it says, we also are men of like passions. Now, that doesn't mean they're 
equal in doctrine or equal in belief. Uh, the word like passions is described as um, when it comes to that subject. Of, oh, give me. When it comes to that subject, it's talking about the things that we agree on, whether it be food, whether it be uh, desires for a home, or whether it be desires for the things that, uh, whether it be marriage, children, uh, those types of things when he says men of like passions. He's not talking about uh, doctrinal or he's not talking about uh, uh, what they're planning on doing. Look at another verse here in James chapter 5, verse 17. James 5, uh, verses number 17. So we can look at another man. Elijah, James 5, 17, was a, a man subject to like passions as we are. And he prayed earnestly that it might not rain, and it rained not on the earth by the space, by the Bible says, of three years and six, uh, six months. So, again, Elijah was also a man of like passions. Now, that doesn't mean uh, that he has the same temptations as another person. Another person may have a different temptation than Elijah had. Uh, G3663, that word, uh, uh, passions are similarly affected. Similarly affected. All right? And, and so we're going to look at an, another angle from passions in another verse uh, concerning former, uh, those things that are former. Uh, look at Daniel chapter 1, verse 4. Daniel chapter 1, verse 4. Where Daniel, in this scripture, it says, The children in whom was no blemish, but well favored and skillful in all wisdom and cunning and knowledge and understanding science and such as had ability in them to stand in the king's palace and whom they might teach the learning and the tongue of the Chaldeans. Now, that word uh, science means intelligence of consciousness. Intelligence of consciousness or thought. Intelligence of consciousness or thought. So, uh, these men, these children of God, they, they knew how the mind worked. They understood uh, sin. They understood false doctrine. They understood uh, the intentions of men. They, they were very wise in, in the subjects of the consciousness. All right? They were wise in that subject. When it comes to uh, Saul, Saul was, a lot of people forget this because they read the scripture uh, where uh, Saul the aged, but Saul the apostle, I mean Saul, yeah, Saul the apostle, he was before a young man. In Acts chapter 7, looking at verse 58, the scripture says, And cast out of the city, this is where they stoned Stephen, and stoned him, and the witnesses laid down their clothes at a young man's feet whose name was Saul. So a lot of people forget that Saul was a young man when he became an apostle. When he was an apostle, he became he was a young man at that time. And so, uh, in these scriptures, the Bible says that they accused him uh, concerning the Corinthians and, and the money. They, they accused him of how he looked. Um, they accused his letters are weighty, but his bodily presence, you know, is contemptible. So, they were accusing him of all these things, and all he was doing was God's work. That's all he was doing. He was doing God's work. And so when you look at uh, what he's bringing out and the different mindset that they had towards Christ, you know, he has Beelzebub. You know, you do the power. Or you cast out devils through the through the Beelzebub, which is a lie, you know. And why do men do this? Why do men look you up and down and then create a, a judgment? Uh, why do they do that without... Uh, truth without fact without righteous uh, perception why is there evil suspicion in their heart why does that uh it's different reasons there's different reasons why it's done uh different reasons why uh, men preach this way some can preach as an ambassador they just serve christ so one or it could be elder deacon or sister where they speak about christ and his kingdom as an ambassador as a servant another one Preaches or teaches or speaks against another in a form of thinking that they're sinning. They just think that they're sinning. So that's what also in the category of evil, evil suspicion without fact. So you just think and then you create these thoughts 
as fact in your mind and then you you speak them out or you may not speak them out you just hold on to them for either months or years and that's how you think of that person um, another one which is righteous is knowing they're sinning and now that's where you have the power through the scriptures to, to speak and help the soul uh, uh, show them through the scriptures that they are in sin so they can repent of that sin and not be condemned at the judgment and so these are just different uh, mindsets and we have to have those two last mindsets mindset which is preach as an ambassador or servant to the public uh, either speak whether there is sin that you know but do not accuse of someone of sinning if just for thinking of it without having the facts as uh, Matthew chapter 18 talks about I take two or three you know concerning the, the truth of it uh, look at another scripture here and uh, let's see in the book of 2nd Samuel 2nd Samuel chapter 12 2nd Samuel is chapter 12 this is dealing with Nathan and David Nathan and David I want to look at verse number 13 2nd Samuel 12 verse 13 where it says, And David said unto Nathan, I have sinned against the Lord. And Nathan said unto David, The Lord also hath put away thy sin. Now the sin he committed was uh, Uriah the Hittite. He put him in the fierce, fiercest battle. He told the men to back out, back up. And then he was killed by the hands of the enemy. So, verse 14, How be it? Because, because by this deed thou hast given great occasion to the enemies of the Lord to blaspheme. The child also that is born unto thee shall surely die. So, you gave this occasion. This is the reason why he's going to die. Your child's going to die. The enemies of the Lord to blaspheme. That's why he's going to die. You have to, you have to suffer for that, David. Uh, so, what did David do? He caused, by, the, by his desire, by his lust, and sleeping with another man's wife, and then having him killed, now the enemies are going to talk about how can God be with David? How can God be with them? Isn't he sleeping around and with other men and men's wives and having their having them killed? That that surely is not God's kingdom. Dagon is our people because we don't do that. And then they'll look at another guy. Uh, you know, uh, John, did you ever do that? Did you ever kill someone and you know cheat on your wife or have them killed? But David, who says he's the king. And God is with them. Is saying that God is with them. Because, but does, is that how their God? Is that how God is? Is that a representation of God? So verse 15. And Nathan departed unto his house. And the Lord struck the child. The Uriah's wife. Bare unto David. And it was very sick. David therefore besought God for the child. And David fasted and went in and lay all night upon the earth. And the elders of his house arose and went in to him. To raise him up from the earth. But he would not. Neither did he eat bread with them. And it came to pass on the seventh day that the child died. And the servants of David feared to tell him that the child was dead. For they said, Behold, while the child was yet alive, we spake unto him, and he will not hearken unto our voice. How will he then vex himself if we tell him that the child is dead? So they're worried about his vexation, how he will react. But when David saw that his servants whispered, David perceived that the child was dead. Therefore David said unto his servants. Is the child dead? And they said. He is dead. Right? David arose from the earth. And washed and anointed himself. And changed his apparel. Came to the house of the Lord and worshipped. Then he came to his own house. And when he required. They said before him. And he did he. So David quickly when he perceived. He said. He saw that the servants whispered. He perceived that the child was dead. He asked, is the child dead? They said he's dead. How, why did he perceive that? Because he already, in verse 14, Nathan already told him, the child shall surely die. Right? So, he had some hope in his heart that through prayer, he would save the child. But in the, also in the back of his mind, if it's not God's will, he wasn't going to keep him alive. He was, the child was going to die. Right, So he perceived all that as he was mourning seven days and as he heard them and recognized, okay, I can see 
what the other answer is. So he got up, he agreed with God's answer, and he kept living his life. He worshiped God. He, he went with his wife. So he was able to perceive that. Amen. That was a righteous uh, perception. But he didn't perceive when he lusted, and he brought her, the Uriah's wife, uh, and he slept with her, got her pregnant. He didn't perceive the, the punishment that was going to happen at that time. That's why he, he, had, he wasn't quick to catch it then um, while he was in sin. So that's why we have to be quick to, to catch uh, because Satan is very crafty and he tries to uh, seduce, entice, uh, tempt. That's why it's needful to have your armor prepared and ready. Uh, Deuteronomy 29, 29. We know the scripture in the Old Testament book written by Moses. The scripture says, verse 29. He says, The secret things belong to the Lord our God. But those things which are revealed belong to us and to our children forever that we may do all the words of this law. So there are things that are secret that um, that we don't have, that they belong to God. Right. So concerning Nathan, Nathan was not surmising, but it was revealed unto him concerning David. And Nathan told him what he did. So he repented. Now, when it comes to uh, the secret things in Ecclesiastes, what he talks about, verse 12, chapter 12 and verse uh, 14, the Bible says, For God shall bring every work into judgment with every secret thing, whether it be good or whether it be evil. So when it comes to every secret thing, there's good things that are secret. There's bad things that are secret. Now, concerning the secret things, uh, there's some things that you do that are good that is between you and God that you do for someone else or, or and you don't announce it and then there's secret things that some may do in a church or in the world that are evil that God's going to bring out at the judgment and so that's the thing that you remove a secret thing that's good uh, it has God has no problem with that God has no problem if it's a good thing that's a secret he has a problem if it's a bad thing and an evil thing and it's a secret that's where it has to be removed. Okay, so when it comes to uh, Deuteronomy uh, 34, verse 6, uh, the scripture says in this particular verse, And he buried, brother Ozan read this, And he buried him in the valley, the land of Moab, over against Beth Peor. But no man knoweth of his sepulchre unto this day. No man knoweth because God didn't want any man to know uh, where his sepulchre was. And so what God doesn't want a man to know, he doesn't. He doesn't tell. He doesn't have to tell. Jesus didn't know uh, when God was going to leave him. Jesus didn't know who touched his, his garment. So there's some things that we cannot uh, try to surmise, have evil suspicion for, about judging something that's true if, if it's not known. Uh, the things that are given to us, that's what belongs to us. Now, Proverbs 18, verse 1. Proverbs 18, verse 1. God and Christ... He is in our reigns, in our realms. He walks through our heart in the midst of the church, just like people walk through doors. He walks in our hearts and, and zooms through and reads everything clearly and speedily. Uh, Proverbs 18, 1, Through desire, a man having separated himself, seeketh and intermeddleth uh, with all wisdom. He, he seeks to find, he separates himself for the purpose of, uh, to intermeddle with all wisdom. Now there's a different type of separation that is written in the book of Jude. Uh, chapter is number 1, which is the only chapter. And the verse is number 19, where it says, These be they who separate themselves, sensual, having not the spirit. That's talking about mockers, who should come and walk after their own ungodly lust. That word is called disjoin. They disjoin from the congregation uh, for the intent to walk in their sins or in their lusts. Now, the verse, Proverbs 18, verse 1, he separates himself, not for the purpose to separate himself from the congregation, but separate his, his mind to focus in to know God's will, know God's word, know about a subject, so he can focus in and hone in on a certain uh, thing. Look at uh, Acts chapter uh, 25. When someone hates you, they will find 
a way to accuse you. They will look for a way. If they can't find it, they will try to search and find. Last time I checked, Christ is the only one I could search and find the reins. But the idea is that they will try to search and find. And they will, if they can't find it, they'll try to create one, make one up. Acts 25, looking at verse uh, 11, the scripture says, in this verse, let me see. It says, For if I be an offender, or have committed anything worthy of death, I refuse not to die. But if there be none of these things whereof the, they accuse, these accuse me, no man may deliver me unto them. I appeal unto Caesar. Then Festus, when he had conferred with the council, answered, As thou appeal unto Caesar, unto Caesar shalt thou go. And after certain days, King Grippa and Bernice came unto Caesar to salute Festus. And when they had been there many days, Festus declared Paul's cause unto the king saying, There is a certain man left in bonds by Felix, about whom, when I was at Jerusalem, the chief priests and the elders of the Jews informed me, desired to have judgment against him. The Bible says, To whom I gave, to whom I answered, It is not the man of the Romans to deliver any man to die before that which he is accused. Have the accusers face to face, and, and have license to answer for him, self concerning the crime laid against him. Therefore, when they were come hither, Without any delay on the morrow, I sat on the judgment seat and commanded the man to be brought forth. Against whom, when the accusers stood up, they brought none accusation of such things as I suppose, <laughs> but had certain questions against him of their own superstition and of one Jesus which was dead, whom Paul affirmed uh, to be alive. So what they'll do, um, they'll switch, switch the script. Right on you, just like a, a player switches a basketball from one move to the next. And so Luke 11, Luke 11, chapter chapter 11, verse 53. We'll look at another scripture here. Luke 11, looking at verse 53. Look what it says about Christ. It says, uh, and he said these things. Unto them, and the scribes and the Pharisees began to urge him vehemently and to provoke him to speak many things, laying wait for him and seeking to catch something out of his mouth that they might accuse him. So they're looking for something, evil suspicion. They're trying to find something, trying to provoke him as he rebuked the Pharisees in this, in this chapter. And so when someone gets rebuked, they don't like that feeling of getting rebuked. Look at uh, Proverbs chapter 29, verse 1, which doesn't feel good, but you have to also recognize, is it true? Proverbs 29, 1, He that being often reproved, hardened his neck, shall suddenly be destroyed, and that without remedy. Saints, remember to uh, recognize uh, if it's the word of God or not, Amen. right? Because that's what will save us. Whether it's young, older, it doesn't matter. Recognize if it's God's word, because... Uh, the rebuke, you don't want to harden your heart like they did in Exodus chapter 4. Exodus chapter 4 with Pharaoh, looking at verse 21, where the Bible says in this verse, uh, And the Lord said to Moses, When thou goest to return to Egypt, see that thou do all those wonders before Pharaoh, which I have put in thine hand, but I will harden his heart that he shall not let the people go. Same thing happened to the people in Egypt. In, in uh, Exodus chapter 4, verse uh, 14, verse 17, where the scripture says, And behold, I behold, I will harden the hearts of the Egyptians, and they shall follow them, and I will give me honor upon Pharaoh and upon the host, host chariots and horsemen. So not just Pharaoh was hardened, but also the Egyptians uh, against Moses and against uh, God. So when it comes to the mind, look at Philippians uh, chapter is number 1, Philippians chapter 1, where they had this against Paul to say, looking at uh, verse number uh, six, uh, 15, it says, Some indeed preach Christ, uh, even of envy and strife, and some also of goodwill. The one preach Christ of contention, not sincerely, supposing to add affliction to my bonds, but the other of love, knowing that I'm at set for the defense of the gospel so here we have two different type of ministers uh they don't they preach to concerning paul contention trying supposing to add affliction to my bonds 
They have envy and strife in their heart, and they're trying to paint Paul in a, a bad picture of sin. That's the reason why he's in jail. That's the reason why this and that is that they have envy in their hearts, and they're trying to add affliction to his already bonds in prison by speaking against him. And so this is evil surmising saints. This is dangerous to have this type of a heart. Uh, did Pharisees do it? Yes, they did it. Um, did uh, they do it in the Old Testament? They did it many times in the Old Testament. Look at, uh, we're going to talk about the word vicarious. Uh, John chapter 20, 21, verse 20. John 21, verse 20. Uh, where the scripture says, Then Peter, turning about, see the disciple whom Jesus loved falling, which also leaned on his breast at supper, and said, Lord, which is he that betrayeth thee? Peter, seeing him, said to Jesus, Lord, and what shall this man do? Now, they were already discussing prior. Many times they discussed who's the greatest. Who's the greatest? They were having that conversation a lot of times uh, before Christ died. So now, Peter looks at this guy, John. He said, what's this man going to do? All right. Jesus said to him, If I will that he tarry till I come, what is that to thee? Follow thou me. Then went this saying abroad among the brethren that this disciple should not die. Yet Jesus said not unto him, He shall not die. But if I will that he tarry till I come, what is that to thee? All right. So concerning vicariously, they were looking at his life from a different scope uh, concerning him living forever. Now, they were already had in their, in their minds prior who was going to be the greatest. And now they find out the news that this guy is going to live forever. Who is he that he should live forever and I can't live forever on earth? You know what I mean? This is, this is the conversation that they were constantly having. Now, until this was written uh, by John, then afterward they realized, okay, we understand that, you know, you're not going to live forever. It's, it's uh, what is it to you? You know, what is it to you? Is the mindset, and so, but this was uh, the mindset that they had to grow and and mature out of. This was uh, evil vicarious, which we described as experience through the imagination, feeling, or acts of another, and so they weren't judging it correctly. Uh, look at First Peter chapter one verse fourteen. We're going to talk about former lust, former lust. First Peter chapter one, looking at verse fourteen, where the scripture. Uh, says, as obedient children, not fashioning yourself according to the former lusts in your ignorance. Former lusts is something, it is defined as previous, first. A sin that you committed before you became a Christian. Something that you savored and tasted mm -hmm. in the past. Look at Ephesians 4.22. Ephesians 4.22, where it gives us another angle of this word, uh, this word former. Ephesians uh, chapter 4, looking at verse 22, where the scripture says uh, that ye put off concerning the former conversation, the old man, which is corrupt according to the deceitful lust. So this is an encouragement. This is an ambassador preaching as an ambassador. Uh, now concerning whether he knows or he doesn't know, uh, that's, that's up to what he knows, who he knows personally in the Ephesian church, right? Now, when it comes to uh, uh, thinking that someone is in sin and seeing them in that sin because of that former lust or former conversation, that's where you're uh, surmising, you have evil suspicion based on what his former conversation and former, former lust was because there is no evidence of him continuing that former lust in his present Christian state unless you see evidence of that sister or brother uh, having that former lust or former conversation consistently in the body of Christ after being born again. Mm -hmm. Look at uh, another scripture here. Uh, look at uh, Genesis chapter 2, uh, verse 21. Genesis 2, uh, verse 21 in the Old Testament. The scripture says in this particular verse, He says, and the Lord God caused a deep sleep to fall upon Adam and he slept and he took one of his ribs and closed up the flesh instead thereof. Now, this is a, just an example of what God did with Adam when he slept. He slept, he opened up his rib 
and his body. He took out a rib. And then, verse 22, in the rib, which the Lord God had taken out of the man, made he a woman and brought her unto uh, the man. So, so the question is that we want to look at is, what does God do? How does God reveal information to us? He brings it into our remembrance. We have the Holy Spirit, Job 33, Job 33. That's either when we're asleep or if we're awake. He puts it, hides it in our mind. It could be when we're asleep or awake. He puts that thought, this is my child, my Holy Spirit is in him, I have authority, I'm going to put this thought in him, uh, this verse or this thought concerning this truth. We wake up, we think about a scripture, when we wake up, that's God's work in hand. Uh, uh, Job chapter 33, 14, it says, For God speaketh once, yea, twice, yet man perceiveth it not. In a dream and a vision of the night, when deep sleep falleth upon men, and slumberings upon the bed, then he openeth the ears of the men. And seal it their instruction, that he may withdraw man from his purpose and high pride from man. He keepeth back his soul from the pit and his life from perishing by the sword. So when God sees mankind and God sees uh, the church, he says, this is what this, this person needs. I'm going to, just like when Adam was asleep, he did an operation. We could be asleep. God gives us an understanding while we're asleep. We wake up. With that uh, understanding, because we belong to Him, He loves us. And so, another verse in Colossians two, verse twelve. This is another operation that He does. Now, this one is happens when we're awake. We can't be asleep when this happens. Colossians chapter two, looking at verse twelve. Uh, the Scripture says, "Buried with Him in baptism, when also you are risen with Him through the faith of the operation of God." Who had raised him from the dead. Now baptism you have to be awake and conscious. Now if a person is cannot talk. Cannot. Uh, uh, he can't talk. He can maybe uh, hear you. Then he can blink. Or he can write it down. And then. But he's not asleep. He's, he's awake. And so that's the operation God does. Uh, Isaiah 5 verse 11. Isaiah 5 verse 11. We have to recognize the operation of God. When he is. Working on earth. Look at uh, Isaiah 5 verse 11. It says, Woe unto them that rise up early in the morning that they may follow strong drink, that continue until night to wine and flame them. And the harp and the vial, the timbre and the pipe and wine are in their feasts. But they regard not the work of the Lord, neither consider the operation of his hands. They don't consider the operation that's happening. He's, he's opening up Adam's body, taking out a rib. Creating a woman, that's an operation. He's not, we're not recognizing the, the church is the body of Christ. We're not recognizing the operation that he's doing uh, spiritually. He's cutting out the sin or the sinner. That's why he went to another congregation. Not all the times, but in, such, in some cases. Or the, this person's getting rebuked or this person being admonished. They're not recognizing or considering the operation. Or they're reaping what they're sowing because they haven't been coming to church. That's also an operation. Uh, or instead of blaming God because that person got sick or this happened, this happened. Always consider. Now, all, a lot of people get sick. Uh, David, he was uh, sick and he, he perished. And we all have to die because of sin. But the idea is that there's specific uh, things that God does that are, um, that are for specific reasons uh, because of sin. And so... Uh, look at Psalms, but it's so, something that we all we have to consider, as the scripture says. Psalms 28, uh, looking at verse 5. Psalms 28, 5, the scripture says, He says, Because they regard not the work of the Lord, nor the operation of His hands, He shall destroy them and not uh, build them up. He's going to destroy them and not build them up because they don't regard the works of the Lord, nor the operation of His hands. That's why he's going to destroy them. We have to regard, saints, the works of the Lord and the operation of his hands. 1 Corinthians chapter 12. Look at this beautiful operation. 1 Corinthians 12 verse 4. That God is doing on the conscience. He's doing on us. And what he did for the, for the saints of Corinth and saints abroad. 1 Corinthians 12. Looking at verse 4. The scripture says, uh, Now there are diversities of gifts, but the same spirit... There are diver differences of administrations, but the same Lord. There are diversities of operations, but it is the same God 
which worketh all in all. So we're going to look at these different operations. It says, but the manifestation of the Spirit is given to every man to profit with all. For to one is given by the Spirit the word of wisdom. To another the word of knowledge by the same Spirit. It says, to another faith by the same Spirit. He has faith. To another the gifts of healing by the same Spirit. To another the working of miracles. To another prophecy. To another discerning of spirits. To another diverse kinds of tongues. To another the interpretation of tongues. But all these worketh that one and the self, same spirit, dividing to every man severally as he will, as he will. So all these operations we just read that God did in the church, some of them are done away with and some of them we still have uh, today. But the idea is that God looks down and he says, okay, I'm going to give this, do an operation for this person. This is what they're going to have. Um, they're going to have uh, the working of the... The spirit of wisdom, the spirit of knowledge, all right? And so, this is the types of types of works that God uh, God does. Look at uh, another scriptures here. Luke 11, verse 54. Luke 11, verse 54 in the, um, in the New Testament, where the scripture says in this particular verse, he says, oh, okay, we just read that one. Forgive me. Uh, we'll read it again. Lay in wait for him and seeking to catch something out of his mouth that they might accuse him. Uh, why do men want to accuse falsely? Some reason is for power. Another one is for desirous uh, to just be justified before others. Some of it is because pride. Uh, but you have to use God's word and read it and not just uh, evil surmise and guess at it. Luke 23 verse 2. The scripture says in this particular verse, they began to accuse him, saying, We found this fellow perverting the nation, forbidding to give tribute to Caesar, saying that he himself is Christ, a king. Now, we already mentioned concerning what Christ said about Caesar. Uh, bring me the coin. Whose superscription is it? He said, Give unto God what is God, give unto Caesar what is Caesar. Now, they're falsely accused because he is a king. Now, in their mindset, they weren't ready. Or they do not choose to believe, some of them, some of them did believe but still hated him, that Christ is a king. Why? Because they despised his doctrine, they despised God, they despised his rebuke, they didn't want to correct, the, the, make their corrections at the rebuke. And that's why they were bringing that against him, Matthew 12, verse 10. Matthew 12, verse 10. The scripture says in this particular verse, it says, Behold, there was a man which had his hand with it, and they asked him, saying, Is it lawful to heal on the Sabbath day that they might what? Accuse him. That they might accuse him. They were searching for some reason to accuse him. Sabbath day uh, was one. John 8, uh, looking at verse 6, searching. How do we stop and we have to find something? If we can't find something, make something up. Hurry up, hurry up. Get those papers on my desk by the end of the day. Uh, John 8 verse 5. But now Moses in the law commanded us that such should be stoned. But what sayest thou? This they said, tempting him that they might have to accuse him. But Jesus stooped down and with his finger wrote on the ground as though he heard uh, them not. Verse 10 says, when Jesus lifted up himself, saw none but the woman. He said, woman, where are those thine accusers? Had no man condemned thee. She said, No man, Lord, neither do I condemn thee. Go and sin no more. Now, they try to accuse him in verse 10, uh, 6 that they might accuse him. And then they also try to accuse her, which she was guilty of, but God uh, and Christ forgave her. And, you know, he reproved them and, and exposed them. Which one of you, uh, uh, if one of you without sin cast the first stone, right? Isaiah chapter, as we begin to close, Isaiah chapter 40. Looking at verse 28, Isaiah 40, uh, 28. Christ is on the throne, saints. All we have to do is, is follow his lead and do what he instructed. Isaiah 40. I want to look at verse 28. Uh, the scripture says, Has thou not known, has thou not heard, that the everlasting God, the Lord, the creator of the ends of the earth, fainted not, neither is weary, there is no searching of his understanding. So as we read Deuteronomy 29 through 9, we can only understand, perceive what he has given us. We cannot 
create or make up something that he uh, did not uh, create. Uh, look at uh, another scripture here. I want to look at uh, see Numbers, uh, Numbers chapter twelve. Numbers chapter twelve in Old Testament. As we begin to close Numbers twelve. We read some of this on Sunday. Just want to look at another viewpoint here. I want to look at verse number six. And he said, Hear now my words, if there be a prophet among you, I, the Lord, will make myself known unto him in a vision, and I will speak unto him in a dream. My servant Moses is not so, who is faithful in all my house. With him I will speak mouth to mouth, even apparently, and not in dark speeches, and the similitude of the Lord shall be shall he behold. Wherefore then were you not afraid to speak against my servant Moses? And the anger of the Lord was kindled against them. So here God is telling them uh, the different ways uh, that he speaks whether to Moses versus uh, a prophet, how he communicates. And, and so in their mindset, he's our brother. He has a speech problem. Um, he got um, the foreskin of his son thrown at him by his, by his, um, his wife. Uh, you know, I mean, they just there's they find reasons to to look down on you, but you have to look at uh, action of when Moses was called, God called him directly and and spoke to him, and so you have to also look at the the power that he had in the sense of uh, the miracles and the wonders. So when it comes to communication, they didn't understand um, forms of communication. He was. This is how he talks to the prophets. This is how he talks to Moses. Apparently, and not in dark speeches. So that's something that they they don't they fail to to recognize. Then they try to create uh, a sin concerning his wife, and then the uh, Miriam turned into a leper for seven days. Uh, look at another uh, scripture here, in Proverbs chapter twenty-five. Proverbs chapter twenty-five, verse two. Uh, Proverbs 25, verse 2. I want to start at, um, let me see, verse number 2. Proverbs 25, looking at verse 2. The scripture says, in verse 2, It is the glory of God to conceal a thing, but the honor of kings is to search out a matter. It says, The heaven for height, and the earth for depth, and the heart of kings is unsearchable. Right? And so it is the glory of God to conceal a thing. The honor of kings, which the Bible talks about, Revelations 1 verse 6 and Revelations 5 verse, uh, verse 10, that God has made us kings and priests. So the earth cannot find out the truth concerning the gospel. The earth cannot find out the truth concerning salvation without coming to a king or a priest, which is in the church, uh, church of Christ. Uh, now, there are things that we cannot search from our king, which is Christ, uh, or God, that uh, is not written in Scripture. Uh, we cannot go beyond what is written. Therefore, we cannot create and make up something that he did not say already. Uh, so, when it comes to uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 4, 2 Corinthians chapter 4, uh, looking, at verse, looking at verse number 7. So in Corinthians 4, 7, it says, Though we have this treasure in earthen vessels, mm -hmm. that the excellency of the power may be of God and not of us. Of God and not of us. So it's God who shines and rains down wisdom, even as Isaiah 55 talks about. He rains it down from heaven on the souls of men. And then we read Job uh, concerning pride, that he may keep man from pride. Job 33, 14 through 18. And so in those verses of Job, you have Elihu, where he hid wisdom in Elihu. He didn't give wisdom to the other men. And then he knew their mindsets. He knew what they were going to speak. And then he, as uh, Elihu was uh, provoked and he was uh, enraged because of the answer that they were giving, mm -hmm. he began to speak. And, and then after, when he was, as he was speaking, he was reproving Job. And his uh, his friends as well, and so what's that example of? That's an example of of uh, the glory of God. Elihu is showing the glory of God by by raining down his wisdom on Elihu, knowing that Elihu was going to give the right answer, and the other men would take heed and uh, 
correct their ways. You know, uh, later on, Job spoke to God. He was reprimanded by God. And then afterward, he, uh, he told his friends as well concerning the sacrifice, do a sacrifice uh, for them, that they had to, to do that in order to get right with him because they were in sin as well. Ephesians 3, verse 9. Ephesians 3, verse 9. The scripture says in this particular verse, he says, And to make all men see what is the fellowship of the mystery, which from the beginning of the world hath been hid in God, who created all things by Jesus Christ. So what we have today here in the church is what uh, is, is a mystery that's been hid. It says, in God, who created all things by Jesus Christ. It says, from the beginning of the world. This is a plan from the beginning of the world, what we have in the church. And I'll close with Hebrews chapter 1, looking at verse 1 and 2. God, who has sundry times and in diverse manners spake in the times past and so far as by the prophets, hath in these last days spoken unto us by his Son, whom he hath appointed heir of all things, by whom also he made the worlds. All right. So we have the word of God to judge concerning being able to perceive righteously, not surmise. So if a saint... In the past, if they have uh, done drugs, don't even surmise they are doing them today if you have no evidence. Or even Paul, you know, Paul was a young man, he was an apostle. He traveled to Corinth, to, to Rome. They had different things to say about him concerning the money. He worked with his own hands, so he, they won't accuse him of that. The scriptures don't say what else uh, they spoke about him. It just only mentions what... But they, we know they had they had uh, a hatred toward him, mm -hmm. concerning how he looked. Uh, his his word is is powerful, weighty. His speech contemptible. Uh, but that's that's one of the things that we have to fight, Amen. so we can be righteous judges in the earth. And you know, concerning Paul, you know, who is he? You know, I wonder what he's doing in Rome. You know, Rome's pretty wild. Uh, you know, Corinth is pretty wild. What's he doing over there? Or, you know, even uh, Peter, you know, I wonder if Peter, you know, who's he to tell me uh, he cut a guy's ear off? You know, he rebuked Jesus. Um, you know, he, he tried to make three churches on a, on a mount. Why didn't he write that in, in Peter? He, he left that part out. And so you don't know what their uh, intention is to accuse. Uh, but the idea is that most of the times in the scriptures, their intention is because they don't like the doctrine they don't like god they don't like the correction and we have to take heed to that so there's different ways and i'll end with this there's people speak of god as an ambassador to the public or to a person there's a person who knows that a person's in sin and then they talk to them so that they can have that sin repented of this is the one that we can have think a person is in sinning and accuse them of sinning Unless there's a report. If there's a report, a bad report, then that report has to be proven uh, and not uh, judged. You know, there's many people who die in prison that get executed and they didn't even commit the crime. They get executed. Needle, electric chair. And so we don't want to bring that to the church and have it in our lives. We have to judge righteously. So for those listening, understand that Christ came, he died, he was buried according to the scriptures, he resurrected according to the scriptures. And Peter, in the book of Acts chapter 2, preached the first sermon on the day of Pentecost. He told them, verse 36, Let all the house of Israel know surely that God had made that same Jesus whom you crucified, both Lord and Christ. When they heard this, they were pricked in the heart and said unto Peter and the rest of the apostles, men and brethren, what shall we do? It's action. Then Peter said unto them, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the remission of sins, and you shall receive the gift of of uh, the Holy Ghost. So that's what lost souls have to do to be saved, to receive the Holy Ghost, have their sins remitted. Peter said in 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 21, concerning baptism, water is the like figure. Even baptism does also now save us, not the putting away of the filth of the flesh, but an answer of a good conscience toward God by the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Uh, we want to have a good conscience toward God because when we leave, we want to be pure and prepared to be received into the heavens to live forever, live forever with God. This world is temporary, temporary place. 
Uh, it has trouble, much trouble, and it's going to get more troublesome before Christ comes. So we want to be ready to that day. If you have any questions, you can call the number on uh, the video, and we'll have a Bible study with you to guide you to a minister in your area. At this time, we'll be closing the saints with a song. Also,